Welcome back to my Warhammer Lore. In today's episode, we'll be delving into one of the fundamental forces of Warhammer. Chaos. What is chaos? Where is chaos? And what resides there? I will, of course, not be able to cover this entire topic in a single video, but my hope is to at least deliver the broad strokes and then follow that up with separate videos on the ruinous powers themselves and, of course, any other aspect we might want to cover. I, of course, will be taking all the information for this video from the latest army books, the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, and more importantly, the Warhammer Fantasy novels as they flesh out more of what chaos is than most sources. But I also must add that much of what we are discussing is going to be hypothetical and my own personal informed opinions on the matter since I do believe I do have a rather well informed opinion so not everything we speak of is going to be concrete this is this is the page you go to to find it a lot of this is going to be broad strokes um, topics so keep that in mind as you are listening so to start we need to establish what chaos is and where as it is in fact a tangible thing, not simply a concept in Warhammer Fantasy, and also in 40k, though they may or may not be the same place. <laughs> it is complicated. You see the realm of chaos as it is usually referred to is something similar to a separate dimension from the main Warhammer world. It is almost a reflection of it except the material world affects the warp, as I will often refer to it, and in turn the warp then affects the material realm. You see in the beginning, or at least what I am led to believe, the realm of chaos was rather empty, up until the first living entities capable of complex thought were birthed, or created by unknown forces. It was these creatures that in turn brought life to the realm of chaos, through the emergence of complex emotion, since that is what actually affects the realm of chaos the most. Of course, it is also theorized that this may have more to do with souls, but uh, that's a little iffy, so I will be moving forward with the notion that emotion is what shapes the warp for good or ill, and it is these conflicting sources that have manifested chaos in the material realm time and time again. Now, I do want to be clear that this is not a video on the ruinous powers, though they, of course, will be mentioned, <laughs> as they have an odd fit into all of this. And I know that might sound strange, but bear with me. So, the Realm of Chaos is an alternate dimension that is affected by the emotions of creatures on a separate plane of existence. I know this is getting more and more complicated, which, in fact, makes the warp hell purgatory, and heaven, all rolled up into one. It is also referred to as the realm of the gods, and this is fitting as strong emotion crafts the warp, and that devout, fervent belief would take the idea of a god and make them a reality. It is this very reason that every pantheon or object of worship in the Warhammer world, for good or ill, does in fact exist in the warp. Not only do they exist, but if for instance, someone were to believe that their god would show them favor for slaying a great evil, and enough people believed the same, then this god, or on another plane of existence, could make some kind of favor happen, to a varying degree, depending on the power of the deity and the need of the worshiper. And this is not necessarily true for just gods, as often something as strange as mere superstition can manifest itself in the material with enough belief. If, for instance, a village of people believe that on a certain day of the year, you have to wear a mask at the harvest festival or a demon will drag your soul to hell, much like Halloween in our world. In the Warhammer world, this is a higher than normal chance that, if the belief is strong enough, that this will actually happen to some local villager that isn't wearing his mask. But of course, that is an extreme example. And more often, Either nothing would happen because there's not enough belief or something not as extreme would happen, something to a varying degree. Um, but that is just a, uh, a very extreme example of what could happen if there is enough of belief in some kind of ideal. 
But I am starting to already wander off topic, which may happen a few times in this discussion. So back to the point, and what is chaos? As this realm has a further effect on the Warhammer world than simply devout belief in superstition, as it is also known by another name. The Winds of Magic. That's right, the Winds of Magic are actually flowing from the realms of chaos. And without them, magic would not exist. In fact, it did not exist until the Warp Gates fell. Keeping in mind that the Old Ones used something else, some kind of assuming technology, and so did the Lizardmen. Um, before the Warp Gates fell, the Lizardmen were just able to adapt it after following some of the Elves' examples. But that is a different story. <laughs> Which also brings me to the forefront why this video is not on the Ruinous Powers itself. As even the more orderly of races embrace magic and mold it to fight against the very source of this power. Which is also why there are such high mistrust of magic users in these civilized races outside of the elves, that is. As often people whom tap into the winds of magic are opening themselves up to chaos, even if they do not wish to serve the dark gods. And indeed, magic can corrupt just as much as exposure to a demon or evil rite. And this isn't just wizards, this also is religious figures. It is easier for a devout follower of a head of a church of sigmar it's easier for him to fall into demonic possession than it is your just average person mostly because he has more to lose and they'll be willing to do what they can to get a hold of his soul and also because he's already whether he knows it or not channeling magic into his body so he will already have a bit of a a twinge but the sidebar to that is that most people in a church that summon a divine source of magic I will call it it is the same source um, are usually more fervent in their beliefs than just your standard wizard so therefore also slightly more resilient than your average um, wizard when it comes to like actual chaos corruption now corruption of the mind and body is a different story because there can be varying degrees of effects when it comes to that but i am also now once again wandering off more of my topic here um but yes so magic can corrupt just as much as exposure to a demon or an evil rite it is actually rather common for mages in the warhammer world to either suffer a grisly end from channeling magic that spins out of their control it's pretty messy and gross or for it to change them as the warping influences creates an abomination known as a chaos spawn for all of you guys out there that know what that is. Essentially just a mutated being that has just succumbed to the whims of chaos and they are very powerful and often mindless unless bound to a powerful source that can give them direction. And now that we've established what chaos is, or at least I hope I have, let's move on to pinning it down more into where. Now, we did establish that it is, in fact, a separate dimension from the material plane of existence, known as the warp. But, it has quite the presence in the physical world as well, specifically from three major sources. The most obvious are the polar warp gates, located on the poles of the Warhammer world, both north and south. Not much is recorded on the southern gate, but the northern gate is much more infamous. These gates are rumored to have been created by the Old Ones. If you don't know who they are, you could check out my video on the Old Ones in my back catalog of lore videos. Though there's also the chance that these gates had already existed before the Old Ones took interest in this world, possibly built by some unknown ancient entity or civilization. Regardless, the Old Ones used these gates to tap into the warp itself, either for travel or possibly to aid in the crafting process they were attempting to groom this world more in line with their great plan. Somehow these gates became unstable and collapsed, and when they did, they opened up a wide portal, letting the realm of chaos pour unchecked into the material. A great war was fought and won at a significant cost. The old ones were either all killed or fled, this world abandoning their creations and servants to the inevitable end. 
as the tide was never ending, as every demon slain was reformed in the warp, and then cast back into the material after a time. Making this war of attrition, the forces of order could not win. However, the elves of all races, specifically Kalidor Dragon Tamer, discovered a way to use the forces of chaos against itself, as it was a magical spell that enacted a ritual to create the Great Vortex that both keeps the island of Ulthuan afloat and siphons off the majority of the winds of magic flooding from the polar gates. This desaturated the raw chaos flooding into the material world and reduced the demonic hordes to nothing as they needed this force to make themselves physical in our realm, thus ending the great catastrophe for a time. It is from these very gates that the majority of chaos uh, influence issues from, as they are still pouring out into the material completely open. This has created what is known as the Chaos Wastes in the Mortal Plane, a vast stretch of land that has been warped and twisted by the influence of the warp itself. Here, mountains upend themselves and reform continuously. Trees grow to unimaginable heights, blood rains from the sky, the earth itself is formed from both rock, glass, bone, and flesh, and time is non-existent. So much so that spending an hour in the waste could be the equivalent of a hundred years, or a fraction of a second. As reality has lost its hold, the closer you come to the gates themselves. Here, the forces of the Dark Gods rally and slay each other for the Dark Gods' amusement, occasionally spilling out into the rest of the world when the vortex weakens and more chaotic energy is present. It is in the waste that demons walk freely and all manners of beasts that should not exist to live, as well as whole nations of men and other races. The most documented, of course, being the frozen tundras and harsh environment of Norska, which is on the fringes of the chaos waste themselves. They are not actually a part of the actual wastes, um, in a way. They are definitely uh, god-touched, as the Norskans would say it but not as much at the deeper you go towards the poles. Now, this does breed a people of great physicality and savagery, due mostly to the nearby influence of the warp, and of course a plethora of, as they are called, gifts of the gods, and unnatural mutations to their flesh, that they embrace much more than the weak southerners and their witch trials and beast hunts. Of course, there are also the Kurgan, the Hung, many tribes of beastmen, and a few ogres, as well as countless followers of the Dark Gods that make their home here. Now, if you've not already, I would also ask you to watch my video on both Norska and Beastmen for more specific details on the um, environment and the Chaos Waste, and kind of more about these cultures, if you are interested. And while the tales of those that venture to these gates is few, they do leave us with details that entire civilizations have been lost to time in the wastes and are unknowable and undocumented. One of such, um, Malekith the Witch King stumbled upon in one of his uh, tales. Uh, that's how he found the circlet of iron. Or perhaps they have all been a trick of the wastes themselves, as nothing can be trusted to behave as they should. These accounts also detail distances being obscured and walking for days to reach a destination that appears to only be an hour away or stepping through a gaping, fleshy mouth in a mountain into a rocky tunnel that leads to a dragon's lair. <laughs> it's, the wastes are an embodiment of just a taste of what the realm of chaos is supposed to be like. You're just getting a fragment of what reality would be like inside of the warp itself. However, there is another source of chaos besides the gates in the Warhammer world, and that is more slip. The Chaos Moon, which is in fact made entirely of warp stone. This was theorized to have been created during the collapse of the warp gates and the opening of the portals into the realm of chaos. Now, for those of you that do not know, warp stone is a kind of mineral-like substance that forms in the Warhammer world somewhat like any other precious metal. However, warp stone, or weird stone, depending on who you are talking to, is the raw stuff of chaos. It is in fact 
condensed magic and thus has a plethora of unique and bizarre properties, most of which we have learned from the Skaven, as it is not only their currency, but also a major trading resource and um, fuels many of their weapons and gadgets and gizmos. But it also radiates chaotic energy, much like um, plutonium in our world. So much so that it often has similar side effects to those not resistant to its influences. As it can warp and mold a person's flesh that spends too much time around it, or even their mind, or simply kill them. For this reason, the literal second moon made entirely of warp stone floating around the planet gives off quite a bit of chaotic energy. Now, usually it is negligible due to distance, but on certain days of the year, the moon is close enough to the planet to allow changes and empower spell casting and rituals to a degree not seen outside of the wastes. Um, Hex and Snatch is one that comes to mind, and there are many other holidays where the moon is very full. In addition, fragments of this moon are constantly raining down on the Warhammer world, literally spreading chaos anywhere they land in great quantities. They are in fact comets and meteors. It's said that the um, twin-tailed comet of Sigmar was actually a piece of this moon that was falling down to the planet. But I am beginning to wander off topic again, <laughs> and perhaps one day I'll be able to do a separate video on Warpstone itself, as I have barely scratched the surface here. And now we finally come to our last question. What exactly lives in the realms of chaos? And I will say this is a bit of a personal opinion on my part, but an informed one based off of the gross amounts of lore I have ingested over the years. So let's start with what we know concretely resides in the realm of chaos. The dark gods and their demons are the most obvious, but there are also lesser gods than the main four, such as um, Hashut and of course the Great Horned One. They reside somewhere in the realm of chaos, which I am tempted to say could contend with dark gods, uh, individually at least in a sneaky fashion, the Great Horned One. Of course, that is also a fanboy speaking. As I, you know, if you've been watching me long enough, you know I love the Skaven. <laughs> and we know definitively that these creatures exist in the warp. And through deductive reasoning, we can also come to the conclusion that more than just these ancient evil powers exist here. As there are forces of good in the material. For instance, we know that during the Great Catastrophe, we have documentation that the elves of Ulthuan literally, through their far superior understanding of the warp, created their gods and were able to bring them into the physical realm to fight against the demonic horde. Which in a strange way makes these gods demons themselves. And we know that this happened because there's still a few walking around in the physical realm. They still are a, a nuisance to the dark gods in many ways. The most obvious being Lilith, or as many know her, the Lady of the Lake. Spoiler alert for all of you Bretonians out there. And possibly Vol. And then, of course, we have the avatars of Isha and Kurnos. Um, but the fact that these entities exist means that there was, in fact, at one time, a separate realm from the Dark Gods in the warp that these gods lived in. Now, it also said that in the ex this exact example that the Dark Gods killed and ate most of the Elven Pantheon, but those are just minor details. <laughs> this, however, proves that good can exist in the warp just as evil. And if these gods were present, that means that the deities from all the races of Warhammer should have a presence in the warp as well. Meaning that the halls of the Dawi ancestors do, in fact, exist as their eternal afterlife as do the Gardens of Moor and the Bastions of the Lady. This also means that the Underworlds all exist, the most famous being that of Nehekara, the Land of the Dead, and the soon to be ruled by Nagash. Which also brings me to my next point, in that not only do gods, demons, and angels inhabit this place, but also things in between. The best example being Nagash himself. As he was a mortal man whom, through necromancy and sorcerous might, 
tethered his soul to the mortal realm and became something else after his first life ended. Not quite a god, nor a demon, but something in between. And for hundreds of years, it is suspected that he resided within the realms of chaos somehow, either in the land of the dead or in some other form, maybe a realm more than likely of his own making until his resurrection in the end times. Which also brings me to a hypothetical question in that was Sigmar in life on the verge of something similar to Gash, all know through a more spiritual means. And that is what transitioned him over into godhood after his mortal form gave out. Or did he simply possess exceptional qualities and a god was born in his image through his established religion shortly after his disappearance? Either way, this just goes to show you that many different and bizarre things are possibilities when it comes to the realms of chaos. And I would not be surprised if metallic men with Gatling laser arms ever made an appearance in fantasy if they hadn't destroyed it. Yes, GW, I am slightly bitter still. However, we do know from the end times that the warp is connected to separate dimensions, even from the Warhammer world. As it is said, after the Dark God's victory, they moved on to torture and corrupt a new place, leaving this world cold and devoid of all life. That is, until Age of Sigmar. But the simple fact that it is mentioned does give credence to a long-running theory that despite what GW has said, and you know, they would be the best source here, in my mind and in many other minds, 40k and fantasy could be connected in a strange roundabout way through the realm of the gods, the realm of chaos, as if they might be one and the same, even though the universes are separate, or at least that is what I like to think anyway. Now, this has been an overview of Chaos in Warhammer Fantasy. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something new or interesting in the process. I, of course, am not perfect and my ideas are not gospel. I do So, do feel free to give me your thoughts and opinions on Chaos in the comment section below. I will, of course, be delving into the Ruinous Powers and maybe a few other interesting Chaos facts. So stay tuned for those in future lore videos. And if you enjoy the sound of my voice and Warhammer, you should check out the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay I host on the channel, Rise of the Forsaken. It's a ton of fun and stays true to the lore for the most part. As a matter of fact, I've been going out of my way to make it as lore friendly as possible. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help me out and keeps the content coming for all of you. And I would like to say thank you to all of the new followers out there and all the new subscribers. I could not be doing this with the channel if it wasn't for you guys. And I hope that you guys appreciate all the content I've been putting out lately. And even the Let's Plays because I personally enjoy them quite a bit. I know everyone loves the lore, but I can't just do lore all the time. You'd be too spoiled. The Cult of Thick must be diverse. <laughs> so check out the fantasy roleplay if you like lore. You'll probably get into it. Um, I think I do a pretty good job doing some storytelling. At least so I've been told. But as usual, guys, I've been Jumbo Thick. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Have a good day.